Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be part three in our um, Pi Game tutorial series. And uh, if you haven't watched the previous two videos, we are going to be starting with code that we already wrote in those two videos. So I recommend um, going back and checking those out or at least figuring out how to create your own uh, bouncing object if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial. Otherwise, if you're just here to uh, see the concepts that we talk about in the tutorial, then uh, that's fine too. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So last time we got to this point where we have a ball that uh, we're, draw we're drawing on screen and we set up the code so that it bounces off of the walls whenever it hits stuff. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and in this video we're going to create a score value and we're going to update it so that our score increases every time the ball hits a wall and ultimately what this game is supposed to be is like a dodging game where the player once we create the player the player is going to try to avoid the ball and every time the ball hits a wall it's going to count the score up so um, let's go ahead and create a score um, let's start by creating a score value which is going to be zero the variable but then also um, what we need to do is is define something in Pygame to be able to put text on the screen. We actually have to define a font. So um, we're going to say that our font is equal to Pygame's built-in Pygame.font.capital F font. And then this needs a couple arguments. Um, it needs the name of the font. So I'm going to say free sans bold.ttf that's one of the ones that um, is just built into most Python installs although you do have to spell it correctly and then a font size and we'll say 20 and so this is um, this is kind of weird but uh, in Pygame there's no way to actually put text directly on the screen you have to define it as a font and then you have to do what's called rendering the text and then um, and then you actually draw it onto the screen. So um, it uses the pygame.blit function, which we'll see in a little bit. But I don't really want this to be any of these bright neon colors we've been using, the red, blue, and green. So I'm gonna go ahead and make white and black real quick. And white is 255.255.0, and black is 000. And I think this would look good as white text on a black background, so. Um, so okay this score um, starting out at zero well we already created code that checks if the ball is hitting a wall so what we have to do is add the global we have to add the global variable um, score inside of our update ball uh, function and anytime we change direction that's how we know that the um, score should be incremented because that means the ball just hit a wall. So we're going to do this score incrementer, add one to the score every time the ball hits a wall. So north wall, south wall, east wall, and west wall um, are all going to count as one point for the score. And the important thing to understand in this video is it doesn't matter what your event that adds one to the score, if it's killing an enemy, if it's jumping over an obstacle if it's whatever your score incrementer is collecting coins you put score increment code at the same point as the event that causes that so that's what we're doing here just because the ball changing direction is us adding one to the score and then we come down to where we draw our game screen and this is where we do the display score so now we're going to take display score now we are going to use font dot render so this is Pygame's built-in um, rendering tool for putting text onto a screen once you've defined a font and we'll do font dot render and then the caption that we want is score and then a space plus the string conversion of our score variable so what we should see on screen is the word score, colon, space, and then the number of the actual score. Um, and then it asks for 
whether it's going to be aliased or not, I've always put a true for that. I don't actually know what happens if you put false. I've always put true. And then it'll ask for text color and background color. And since we defined white and black, we'll throw those in. And then you use, like I said before, screen.blit. And blit is just sort of Pygames. Um, it, it stands for block transfer, I believe. But it's Pygames like actually drawing it onto the screen function. So you have to do that anytime you want to put something on the screen. And let's say we want to blit display score. And we want 10 and 10. So that's positional. Um, actually, this needs to be a tuple. Um, but this, these are coordinates of where it's going to draw it on. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take a look if we caught everything here. Um, when we run this, if we have a score in the top left, yep, that counts up every time the ball hits a wall. So this is gonna seem pretty pointless and you can tell right now if we just let this run for forever, um, the score is gonna increment for forever um, because we haven't created the game over conditions, the actual like fail conditions yet um, because we haven't created a player yet. But this is kind of important to create the framework around your game before you start creating the functional playing of the game. And something else to understand about Pygame, some people start from the player and build the world around the player. Some people create the world and then just insert the player into it. Both are totally valid. <clears throat> Excuse me. Both are totally valid. There's no correct way and incorrect way of creating a game if at the end of the day it's fun to play and it works. Um, so this is just how I went about creating this particular game. So uh, real quick, this video is not too long yet. Um, I'll add a few things in here that I just think would be kind of cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and draw another circle inside of that first circle. Um, and I'm going to make this guy red. And I'm going to put it just inside the circle. And I'm actually going to fill it in. It's not going to have a line width. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating the object. I'm just making it a little more interesting looking. I'm, I'm drawing a red circle after I draw the green circle, but I'm using the same central coordinates. So now when I run this, you should see, yeah, the ball is much more vibrant. I mean, it really stands out at you. It's not just an open circle. Um, you know, that, that sort of thing's kind of cool. Uh, obviously, you can just create various colors with various RGB values and play around with the aesthetics. It doesn't just have to be red, green, and blue. You can mess with all of the RGB colors. Um, but so that's, that's kind of a nice feature. One thing uh, that you could do if you're, if you're just tweaking the game and you don't really love the way it's playing, you can keep messing around with the speeds um, just by changing the X and Y direction. And um, again, I know I've mentioned this in previous videos. When I do this run, it runs pretty smooth on my computer. If you're following along with the code, it should be running pretty smooth on yours. The screen capture software really only catches like 20 FPS. Um, but so that's it for this one. We added a score parameter. We went over how to put text on the screen and uh, stay tuned for future videos. We'll get into adding the player, adding game over conditions. Um, creating buttons and um, text events and we'll uh, go through a lot more so for now if you have any specific questions about what you saw here today or you'd like to see anything in particular in the future uh, be sure to let me know in the comments and um, as always thanks for checking out the channel and good luck with your code thanks bye